Good afternoon crafters, we are live in the Facebook group and today we'll be doing a Facebook live dedicated to a by popular request uh, demonstration. I forgot my words then. <laughs> so we'll give it a few minutes as we always do just so who, everyone who wants to join us live can find us live. Um, do let me know in the comments below what you've been up to that you can hear and see the demonstration okay. And if you have any questions as we go along, please feel free to type them in. Uh, we will try and answer them as many as we can as we go along. So I can see quite a few of you joining us already, so thank you very much for finding us here in group. It's lovely to have your company this afternoon as well. And today we're going to be looking at... Uh, <laughs> A triple easel so uh, it's been one of those that we've had requested over and over and over again and we finally found enough time set aside to be able to bring you a nice sort of in-depth demonstration on how to create one of these and I think a lot of you guys who have perhaps been a bit intimidated by trying something that looks quite fancy will actually find it's pretty simple and a lot of fun to create as well so this is uh, the card that sparked it all. This is Janine's triple easel that was created for the Garden Safari launch back in May. Really, really gorgeous card as we, we all just love getting lost in this kind of design. So we've got the flowers in here, we've got Foxy Loxy sitting in the middle, all the filigree to the back of the design as well. And just a whole host of florals and just prettiness, really, really pretty designs. And of course, being an easel, we've got Foxy in the middle who can fold flat and then all of the sides come in let me try and do it around that way to camera so it all folds flat as well so really really sweet little design but it's something that can be done with a whole host of the different collections uh, included within the Carnation Crafts website. So what we've done for this one, I'm just sort of looking at the, the dies in front of me, we're using a little bit fancy, which is our first anniversary collection. So pretty pinks, flowers, we've got a little ballerina mouse in there as well. Filigree frame and card shape, of course and the garden reflections. So when we start going through, I will obviously name everything as we go, name check everything as we go. If you do have any queries, by all means, type them up. I will keep an eye on the comments. Um, let me just have a scroll back through. Lots of people saying hello, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. We have Leslie and Christine. Janine, the wonderful creator of said card is joining us too. So hello Janine and thank you for your inspiration. Uh, Carol's here and Jean, Pam. Anne says hello from a very hot Spain. Oh goodness me. Well, I hope you're, you're keeping cool, Anne. May and Mary are here as well. So lots and lots of people quite excited about uh, this particular Facebook Live. I will load it to the group afterwards as well. So if you want to watch back, if you want to craft along, perfect. Oh, Paul is here. Brew sorted rich tea biscuits. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, good choice. I don't think I've got any snacks to hand. I've got a drink though, so that's all right. That will keep me going. So I think if everyone's happy to, let's get that camera turned round on that button there and just adjust, just so we can get everything in shot. Let's see if I can get that light a bit better at the bottom of the screen there. Possibly, possibly not. <laughs> Michelle, thank you for a distraction from doing my VAT. <laughs> well, hopefully it's a welcome distraction there. So we're going to be working on our nice new craft mat. That is something that's coming soon and a lot of people have been asking about it. It's a lovely surface to be working on. I'll try and keep everything uh, in shot as well. Um, but as I say, I'll, I'll keep an eye on the comments as they start coming in too. So essentially for our resor, what we need to start creating is our card base. Now when it comes to construction cards, sort of bigger, more exuberant cards like this one, my base, I tend to like working on A3 just because it gives us somewhere to go with the design and with the size of base we'd like to be working with. So to create our easel, and it's the same for all three easels within this collection, all we need to do is score this A3 sheet of card. I think this is 300 GSM white card here. And I'm going to be using my Caterpillar just because uh, I love the, uh, the way it works. It folds and scores the paper around a metal rule rather than... Um, sort of working into a divot. It can work both ways, but it's just, it just gives you a cleaner and more crisp finish. So card like so, and we're gonna take our base layer from 
the a little bit fancy card shape. Leslie, would be nice if Carnation could produce a 300 stock too. It's something we can feed back. I mean, lots of companies do do the, the card stock there, Leslie. Ours is, uh, for construction weight, is 350, um, which I love if we're making sort of standalone cards. But just because this is going to have lots of layers, we're going to be working on a 300. So we're taking the outermost die, the outermost matten layer. When we say that, it is just simply this framing device, this idea of the outermost die design. And we're going to be just measuring that on our scoreboard. This one, uh, we want to score around eight inches to give us enough room to play. So let's move that little rule up to the divot, into the little notch where the eight inches is. Pop the card back in like so. And then take our little handy tool and score up the rule. So it's kind of grabbing the paper, the paper, uh, the card, sorry, and just forcing it either side of that rule to create a nice, crisp, clean score. Okay. I'm going to move my scoreboard just out of the way for the minute. And that then gives us our base to start working on. So for me personally, and you're, you'll find your own way of doing it, that's obviously the scored side where we've scored. So turn it over and fold along the impression there okay so folding then we take a bone folder if we had one to hand where has mine gone there it is and we just go along that score that we've created just to get even more of a crisp clean and sharp finish okay so that would be the same if you're creating eight by eight card blanks uh, that would be the same if you're creating shaped card blanks exactly the same method of scoring and folding when it comes to cutting that card base, use your outermost die. And what is key is you line that die up like so. So one edge is over that folded line, okay, that folded side, which means when we come to cut, all of this will cut out, but this will remain as a folded edge. Top tip, if you're going to run this through your cutting machine, what I'd always recommend is a little bit of repositional tape. Just hold it in place as it goes through your cutting machine, okay? Stops it sort of wavering about. You can even trim, you know, trim up to this side here just so you've got the option there when you're using these to make the most of the rest of the excess paper. So that goes through the cutting machine. Like so, let me get rid of that extra piece of paper there. And that will then cut, Okay. As simple as that. That has cut you your card blank, like so. Let me just remove the inside pages there. And that gives you your unique card base, okay? That is as simple as it gets. That could then be a top fold card. If you score it the other direction, it could be a side fold card. But for this one, we're making that easel. So to transform the front of it, all we need to do is score along the middle of the top leaf. So into the scoreboard again let me just show you so i'm trying to go through every sort of um step if you like because we don't often get the, the chance on air to do it step by step like this but it just gives you a really good insight into how these things work so this time around we can pop our card shape into the scoreboard find our midway point and come down to create our score okay if you've got something which has a fancy edge and it won't butt up there quite as easily, what you can do is use the scored edge because that's going to be a straight line here. That then ensures when you come to score along the middle, your middle is going to be straight and in parallel to your folded edge as well. Okay, so that just gives you a little idea on how we're creating that design for our easel. So you go ahead and do that with the outermost die from a little bit fancy. And then we're just going to repeat that process when it comes to the other easels as well. Now from here, I'm just trying to think what would be the next easiest stage. We can take a look at the side easels. So we're going to create the same thing again, exactly the same as what we've just done with the a little bit fancy card shape. But we're going to cut it from garden reflections okay so you could probably get an idea 
on how this is all starting to build and load together. This time around, because it's a smaller die set, you could absolutely use an A4 piece of card if you wish, or the off cut from the A3 that we've just cut. But again, same thing again. You score, you position your die over the edge, over that folded line like so, run it through your die cutting machine, and then you have your other easel like so. It is as simple as that. Now from here, you could use these as independent easel cards if you wanted. Again, remembering you scored down the middle of that smaller easel too. But because we're making this triple easel, this fantastic kind of interactive card design, we want to start building it in a way that kind of makes sense, okay? So I think first off, what we're gonna do is get all of our component M pieces made ready before we start construction. So I'm going to pop our main card to one side and bring in, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> so that is the finished from the garden reflections. That's going to be one side of your card. And it's just a case of matting and layering. So if I just bring that die back in, Garden Reflections is from the Garden Safari collection. It's this lovely um, like scroll work, open window, perhaps it's a mirror. It's just a really pretty little die set, lots and lots of nesting dies in between here to give you this like fancy edge, this framed edge to your card designs. So we've cut it from the white to the inside, we're going to add a matte layer in the Perfect Papers in this nice rich pink. And we're going to use a little bit of finger lift just to fold over like so and pop in the inside. So every area, every little nook and cranny of this card is going to have coloration to it. It's going to run down this wonderful pink and white theme we've got going on. Hopefully this is all making sense. Let's just have a little scroll back. Uh, da, 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 da. No, no questions yet. Everyone's just lost in lost in demonstration, I think. <laughs> to the top, obviously we don't want this sort of unsightly edge where we've got the straight line. We will need to add a second cut from the outermost eye of the garden reflection set, that outermost matte layer, in the white card again just lining that up so all of the edges match holding that in place before we come to peel away one strip of the red liner tape now you'll notice the red liner tape is only on the bottom half of this folded score line okay that is so when we come to stick the top is securely fixed to the base but the back is free to give you that pop-up motion of the easel of which we're all familiar. The reason why we stick one down first is it gives us hands free to go in and remove those other areas of red liner tape to create this time around our easel for our garden reflections. And these are really cute. I mean, these would make gorgeous little note lit cards as well, wouldn't they? Or place settings for perhaps a wedding table or thank you cards or, you know, anything where you want to batch make. This is going to be a really, really pretty little die set to do that with. Carrying on with that same framing device, again, we're going in with that darker pink. And this one is cut from the smaller matte and layer of the Garden Reflections die set. So let me just, I'm battling with my tape. I don't know whether the heat has sort of welded the uh, the stick, if you like, to the uh, the backing tape. I don't know whether any of you guys have noticed that recently, but I think these, this hot weather has really affected my, uh, my tape. Now for sticking, you'll notice what we always do, what I, I prefer to do is fold back the tabs or the excess tape or the like tape um, carrier sheet if you like fold it back across the side of the card which allows me to then pop the matte layer into place like so holding that then in place securely make sure it's all lined up and then I can peel away those tape runners so it makes everything nice and even uh, Janice says, what card am I using? I tend to use 300 CSM, but the card can end up quite heavy, though sturdy. Yeah, this is all 300. So the white card I'm using um, 
for the base layers is 300 GSM. The Perfect Papers is 300 GSM. Yeah, it's going to it's gonna be a monster of a card. <laughs> That's the only way to describe this one. It is a beefy card. So it's the kind you'd want to put in a gift box to send or gift to someone personally. Um, for the upper white layers in uh, the filigree frame and also the, the accompanying sort of nested dies as well, I've styled it up. I'm using 240 um, Perfect Smooth just so it gives you a little bit of a lighter finish on the front of the card rather than the heavy weight for the bases of the card there. Uh, with that being said, we can move on to these. As I say, these have been cut from uh, 240 and a little bit of foam this time just to lift it from the background like so. But same thing again, just folding the carrier of the tape across the edge. The middle there, we've just popped a little extra bit of foam. We don't need to take the, the tape off of that. That's just to make sure the middle of the card doesn't sag. It just adds a little bit of stability. This is, um, what mill foam is it? It's one mill foam that I'm using here. And same thing again. We're just lining up the mats and layers like so, holding them in place as we come, just then peel away the tape excess. Okay, and you see how this is building. It's giving you this lovely, neat finish all the way around the edge. And people often ask, you know, they struggle with mats and layers and things like that. The dies are all done for you. The, the, um, the sizing for the mats and layers is all done for you. The plain outer dies are your matte layers that you can just cut in a variety of, of colours. Um, and it's just... It's just super simple. It's a super simple way of creating a framing device. It's a super simple way of adding colour to your background and breaking up the white as well. And it gives you this very, very elegant finish. So again, same thing again with those perfect papers. This time uh, I'm using the lighter pink from A Little Bit Fancy and then the white on top with the super smooth, perfect smooth. So that gives us two easels, okay? Exactly the same. Now, to the inside, I probably didn't mention this, whenever you've created a card base and you're using something that has quite a, a prominent filigree to the top, obviously that fold, you're covering it up with, with the, other, the other side of the white, but when you come to put a matte layer on the inside, you do just want to trim down that inside matte layer just so it's free of the fold and it makes sure everything then works smoothly and correctly okay so that's given us our two side panels remember that is created from the garden reflections die set huge huge amount of ways of using that little pretty little die set there and if you hang on until the end of the video not only do I have some sneaky peeks but I might have a sneaky little Facebook uh, live offer for you on this particular die set as well uh, Leslie says Love that Carnation give you the mats and layers to go with the main die, no measuring to get it wrong. Exactly, exactly. It just makes everything an absolute pleasure to work with. Um, do, do, do. Karen says, I've asked for the easel card with the acetate, can't work it out. So Karen, we had more requests for the this one that we're doing, the triple easel, but I have included a little bit of acetate. So if you want to just so hold on, or if you're watching this at a different time, skip forward, and you'll see me using the acetate in a slightly different way as well. Uh, Margaret's saying it won't start. Margaret, if you perhaps, I can see your comments coming up. So perhaps if you come out of the group and come back in, you should be able to watch along there. Hopefully you'll be able to find us again. Should be top of the um, feed, if you like, for the crafters page. Um, right, so we've got our, our side elements. Excuse me whilst I just have a sip. So what essentially we have created there are these two panels, these two side elements for the overall design, okay? Is that starting to make sense? Can you kind of see where we're going with this now? Those side panels, we can pop to one side just for the minute while we build the main of the easel frames. And it's done in exactly the same way. You've seen us cut out the base layer, like so. And this should be quite familiar given we've just gone through the smaller ones, but again, essentially the same sort of thing. You've got the fold across, the score across the middle to create that easel effect. To the top, we want to add in our mats and layers. And again, these are just our framing devices. So we've cut from that outermost eye, once again, just that plain white to even up and create that pop-up effect to our easel. So again, holding that in place, 
just getting that nice and even and lined up all the way around. I think then we are done with that. And then we can go in with our pokey tool, grab the carrier sheet from the tape, remove and stick down in place. And you'll notice whenever we're sticking down, I've added that tape in quite close to the fold, not exactly on the fold or on the score, but close enough for it to grab and then give you this secure finish to the inside of these panels. Once we've got one stuck in place, and uh, we go in with our pokey tool to remove the other two. Never, when you're creating, try and remove the tape and then stick your card on because you, if you're anything like me, you're going to get all muddled up and all stuck together and end up wasting card. The easiest way to do it is line up and then stick after. So again, just to reiterate as we're doing, you've then got your easel card design. Uh, Leslie says, chomping at the bit now to see what the sneaky peek is and to offer on the die set. Oh, bless you. Yeah, <laughs> have to stay tuned to the end of the video, Leslie, <laughs> but I'm sure we'll uh, we'll get there eventually. Um, oh, I haven't put tape on the back of that one. That's me being nice and organised. So for the next layer, we're going in with the smaller matte layer. Again, in that pink, you see the same sort of reoccurring theme throughout the different dies that we're using. And we're going to use a little bit of finger lift. Now, finger lift is great because, as you can see, when we're taking it off the reel, offering it up just to line up and measure to make sure we're getting the right length of tape, it's rippable. So you don't have to worry about scissors or finding out, you know, where they've got lost under your pile of work. It just makes it super, super quick and easy. It's my, my preferred method of, of tape when it comes to this part of the construction. And then same thing again. We are just peeling back a little bit to make a tab, folding that over to make little wings, and then lining up. Because as you've seen, as you've seen how this goes together, it just gives you a very elegant finish, but it's super easy to achieve. So peel away those excess for our first matte and layer. And I've also forgotten my tape on that one. See, I was in such a rush to get the card finished and ready. <laughs> what with tape is that? Um, how do you know what? I have no idea. Um, it's from Create and Craft. It comes in two widths. So these are the two widths. Let me just grab them from my shelf. They have, oops, a wider one, which looks to be, I think it's actually a centimetre when it's on the roll. And then that looks to be about five mil on the actual roll. Finger lift, if I can find a little area, I don't know if this is going to show up on camera. Can you see it's just the tape down the centre of the roll? So it means the edges either side, you can get sort of a pokey tool under there. These are, are loose when you come to lay them down, so the edges are loose. It just makes it easier, so you've got something to grab hold of. Um, hopefully that answers your question there, Pam, as well as Chris, yeah? For this layer, which is our pink, uh, lighter pink, with our filigree to the top, I'm going to use a little bit of foam. I'm, I'm slightly addicted to using foam in demonstrations because it gives you just a little bit of lift, a little bit of height, without adding too much bulk. The last thing we want to be doing with this particular card is adding loads and loads of thick bulk. Uh, this is a 1mm foam. So you see how, just to be conservative with our foam, we're going down either side and trimming down. And then just to make sure we are nice and secure, trim a little bit and that goes in the centre. We don't need to worry about taping that one down. That just lifts the centre and make sure we don't get any sag to the middle of the card there. And then it's the same as what we've just done with the finger lift. We just take the excess tape, the carrier of the tape over the edge of the card like so and then add it and this creates a really really stunning backdrop onto which we could then pop anything it could be uh, any one of the lovely floral dyes that we do or perhaps the mice anything really or the little creatures but having that one mil on the foam just gives you a little bit of drop shadow it gives you a little bit more prominence to the middle of that card now this filigree as we've said, let me just bring it back into shot, is the filigree from the A Little Bit Fancy die set. And it is simply cut from 240 uh, white, perfect smooth. And we've used the outermost filigree, because these do come in two parts, and the innermost 
filigree to give you this whole panel of filigree there. Really, really detailed die. If you're using something that is as detailed as this, let me show you how I would put it on my cutting plates. Because again, it's another little key bit of advice. I see a lot of people asking about this particular sort of thing where you've got lots of uh, detail, lots of filigree in a die. So let me just move that out of the way so you can see. So these are my cutting plates. And to cut something like this, what I'd always recommend is pop it in in a slight angle like so. That way, when it comes to bump up against the rollers, when the rollers pass over the die, it's going in on a smaller surface area. If you try and cut it like that, the rollers are going to be met with a whole load of force in one go, which makes them struggle. It makes it more difficult to do. That sort of position just means you've got a little bit more of a fighting chance. We then pop the center in, making sure that is nice and aligned as well. You can be using a magnetic shim if you'd prefer, and then trim your card down to fit. So you're not wasting any cards. You're not wasting these areas card. Trim your card to fit over the top, double ups and cut tidy, okay? This is gonna be your little wonder tool when it comes to die cutting, especially when it comes to filigree things like this where there's a lot of detail. Not only does it catch all the little bits, if you use it as a pocket, so you can put the die in between and then you put the card on top and then the other side comes over like so, so it catches all the bits in the middle, great for paper piecing as well. But it also acts as an extra shim. Now this can be used over and over again. You can see mine has been well loved, all of those cuts on it. But it just forces the paper down into the die and gives you a really, really clean and crisp finish. So cut tidy, really, really an absolute must. And have your die just on the corner like that. So you're not trying to force anything, sort of a large amount of metal through the machine in one go. Just have it on the corner just to make sure you're getting that ease through gently. Okay. That's then going to give us this fabulous filigree panel, as we've said, just works into the background there, gives you something, a little point of difference there, a little bit of texture to the background. But you see how by using those same colour tones from the white into the dark pink, into the light pink and back into the white, you've then got the corresponding colours across your other little um, easel side easels there as well okay hopefully this is making sense we're not getting uh, many questions in so hopefully that's all kind of making sense remember if you do have any questions by all means type them up we are answering them as we go next up this is possibly the bit which has kind of stumped everyone if I just bring into view Janine's easel again you see where we're going with this we just, all we need to do, and it is really is as simple as this, to create, let me just fold these back. Sorry, Snail, for, for squidging you there. We're just going to be tucking in and prettifying, okay? It really is a super, super card to put together because it looks very, very intricate, but when you break it down to its component pieces, its component parts, you can see where we're going. So... To do and to layer, your best way of doing this is lining up first and choosing where you want your easels to sit. Now, you've got this lovely amount of bumps, these lovely scroll edges here. These actually work really well as placement as well. Um, Sandra, hello, Hannah. Is that a media mat we're working on? Yes, it certainly is. And it will be launching very soon on Create and Craft. It's a new product from Carnation Sandra. So lovely surface to work on as well. So we're going to choose, remember the golden rule, do not stick anything until you're happy with the placement. But we're going to then work out where we want our easels to sit and make sure they are all lined up. So the easiest way to do it is have everything open and find a point that works for you. So I'm using, let me get my pokey tool. There's a little kind of point in area here on the Garden Reflections die, which can line up beautifully with one of the points on one of the scroll edges for the a little bit fancy. So that's my first point of reference, like so. And then we just need to make sure we mirror that on the other side. So have your die open, your die cut open, and you're mirroring. So remember, we're looking for a point which matches on this side 
and a point that matches on this side. That's your first way of getting these two easels level. And then we need to make sure they're sort of turned out at the same um, rate, if you like, or the same direction or same amount as well. So to do that, all we need to do is tweak this one a little bit. So we're gonna go quite far out, making sure we're keeping that little point here aligned. And where do we, how do we wanna line this up? Let's have this over a bit. So we're gonna have the top of this bump, if you like, lining up with the middle of the central bump. Okay, hopefully that's making sense. I just feel like I'm saying words now. <laughs> And you can always test it. You can always hold it in place, open things up, hold them in place, and just tweak like so. So, oops. Your outer easels are going to work as your stopper for your main easel, okay? So, I'm quite happy with placement. I think that's kind of sensible. So, bump on there like so, and bump to the middle. I think that works. Let's just double check that. It's going to catch and hold nicely and it's got enough room. I think that's going to be enough room to hold in place. I mean, obviously you can tweak it. It's completely down to you when you come to start making these designs. Just know that obviously we're working with quite heavy weights of card here. So you're going to need as much support from the base as possible. So to stick in place, when we're talking of support, we're going to work on red liner tape. So I'm using a nice thick red liner tape here as well. Just keep going back, checking that everything's aligned. You're happy with the placement before we come to peel away one edge. Now that card has shifted a little bit. So it is a bit of fingers and thumbs when you're trying to demo to camera <laughs> and do this to hold. Just gently peel and stick. Okay. Now I'm not ready to unleash the rest of the red liner tape. So we can just simply smooth it back over like so and just hold that in place for the minute. That then frees us up to work on the other side with no risk of this coming down and then the whole thing getting stuck together as well. So it just gives you the opportunity just to have a little bit of a play around, make sure you're happy with the alignment on the other side as well. So that needs to come out just a little bit. So that little bump to the middle is lining up with the bump on garden reflections and this little point here is matching in with the point on the base as well so same thing again gently holding holding and peeling and then just easing that back over if it has moved at all before sticking down in place remember keep that carrier sheet just in place for now until we're ready to start adding in the same top um okay that makes sense right again always check your work as you're going through everything lays flat everything then lays on top of one another so we're getting there we're getting there with the construction of this now obviously this is looking a bit unslightly in the middle and we need something that's going to be a little bit more um holding in place a little bit more supportive we also just want to cover this up so all we do is sandwich okay as simple as that we're going to sandwich the easels that we've just popped in place by using the same matte and layers that we have on the front of the card so we're going pink dark pink into the light pink we've just cut another round of that white just look how that neatens everything up instantly everything then looks like it's one layer of card across the front of the design so I'm going to flip that front that back so I can actually work on it like so. And we're gonna hold in place and peel away. Now I would be quite tempted to add in a little bit of stick there as well, but I think we're gonna go in just for the purpose of demonstration and line up. Again, we've trimmed down that top, remember? So we've got that flat edge along the top where it's meeting for the fold of the design. Just lining up like so holding oop, in place it's having a little bit of a wiggle <laughs> a little bit of a wiggle there let's get that back in like so where's my pokey tool gone gently lift one side trying to keep that all straight and together 
And remember, don't try and remove the tape and, and stick it all in one go. Give yourself a fighting chance to get this all straight and even, you know, it's how we're just going in and checking at every step that we haven't got any slight room for area. Okay, once we're happy, remove that one layer of tape and then just press that down. So again, remember, we've swapped from that finger lift. We're now using red liner tape because it's much more secure. It just gives you this much more um, stronger finish, if you like. And again, just moving this round just so we can get in and remove the carrier sheets on these other bits of tape. Oops, like so. Getting that one stuck down first just makes it a whole lot easier when it comes to sticking everything else, making sure you've got nice, neat finish on everything and you're not trying to fight the card. It just makes it a much more pleasurable way of working. And then we can smooth the other areas of tape into place, okay? So there we have the full construction of that triple easel. So when we come to open it all up, you've got, once the stoppers are in place, your easels are gonna be holding, your outside easels are gonna be holding that central easel in place. Does that kind of make some sense? Hopefully that makes some sense, like so. Let's have a little bit of a tidy up, just while we wait. If there's any questions coming in, do let me know. If there's anything you wanna see, do let me know because this is your chance to ask those questions. Isn't that a lovely base to start working on? Perhaps you want to pop a sentiment. Perhaps you want to pop a photo in that frame as well. Really, really pretty way of focusing the eye down into the area of design. Now, I did promise that we'd be having a look, uh, where has it gone, at some acetate as well because a lot of people have asked. And um, I know one lady, and I think it was Karen, said she was struggling with the acetate um, idea of it all. Now, another way of adding in a point of difference, remember with Janine's card, we've got Foxy Loxy that sits in the middle. Delta Fox here is his name. And he's a little easel in his own right. So technically speaking, it's actually um, a quad easel rather than a triple easel. Um, there's a number of ways of doing that. Janine's used uh, the mirror vignette on the back as well. So you've got the colour on the back. Um, but I wanted to show you, because I know a couple of people did ask about the acetate. I wanted to show you another way of making sort of an invisible easel support. So here we have Francesca Mouse, our ballerina, from A Little Bit Fancy. She's been mounted. She's been cut from her vignette. And that's her artwork. That's a free download from Carnation Crafts. But we've basically created a mini easel design on the back. So you've got that first bit that comes up to match the top of the shoe here, then the supporting arc, and then the bit that will then stick on the inside of the card. This would be the same regardless as if you're using card or whether you're using acetate, you want to use a nice heavy weight of acetate, so a construction weight. And the reason we're using the acetate is so it's invisible to the inside. So if we just open our card back up again, Francesca Mouse is going to be on the inside, but we want her to be able to then lift up and become an easel in her own right as well. So when it's all stuck together, she's going to be coming up like so, and she's going to be supported by the top of the card as that comes down as well. So she's she's got a bit froppy because I've bent her a little bit. You'll have to forgive me. But we can strengthen her just by popping a little bit of card on the back as well, just to neaten everything up. But that hopefully tries and, and answers the question about the acetate. You need construction weight, so it will take and hold a score if you're going to be designing with this as well. I'm going to pop her to one side for the minute, just so we can add in our stoppers. So for your stoppers, you need to work out where you want your main card opening to. And in turn, that will direct and inform as to where you want your easels opening up to. Now, a stopper is, as the name would suggest, a little piece of card that's going to act as a little point into which the back of the card 
forces itself into so it stays open so it works as a stopper now these have been cut from the hearts from the a little bit fancy card shape uh, mounted just on a two mil foam there just give them a little bit of height the idea is you need to rise them up from the base to give them somewhere to hook into if that makes sense so we can pick one side find an area where it looks aesthetically pleasing but also functions and, and works correctly as well so around about there and we're going to go in with that foam tape like so just to create our stopper and again because we're working on this mirrored easel if you like you then want to mirror that same um aspect again on the other side so remove the tape stick one side down find your point of reference just about there I mean you can if you were that way inclined measure this as well but there we go so you've got your two stoppers in place Having something that's a stopper, like a mini stopper in the same colour as your card background, lets it um, disappear, if you like, into the background of the card. So your card design becomes a working element rather than detracting from the overall look of the card design. So your easels at the front are going to be held by that stopper and then your background is going to be held by that other stoppers either side. I hope that's making sense. I feel like I'm waffling a little bit. <laughs> Do me let me know if there's any questions anyone has. From here, essentially, we've got our card base. We've got the design of the card ready to start adding to. So I think for this one, let's just go to town with a few flowers. I think that's going to look really pretty. So you can always have your easels out the way, your little side easels out the way before you want to start work on your floral element for centre. So you want something quite attention grabbing, you want something quite full on in the background here to match that really opulent sense of drama if you like from this fancy easel that we're creating so we're going in with the florals from the a little bit fancy collection we've got the astilbe we've got the agapanthus we've got the peony there's lovely ruffles of feathers and remember whenever we pop down a die cut just test them out for size first before we commit to sticking anything um you can snip into these you can add into these you can add different looks to them as well but remember key is a little bit of texture so we're going to go in and just give these a little bit of shaping, just using a thumb and a pokey tool as well. Just give this a little bit of height, give this a little bit more um, drama to it as well. So every time we create a die cut, never stick it flat to your card design. Give it a little bit more love and attention just by curling those petals and those designs over the edge of a pokey tool. You don't have to do all of them. It just gives you a little bit of point of difference, okay? Gives it a more natural finish. Same with those leaves. Never forget the leaves. Give them a little bit of rounding. Now, these um, artwork, these vignettes that you see here, as we call them, have been printed on 120 Pro Printing Paper, which is our uh, preferred printing paper because it gives you this lovely finish, this high-quality coloured finish to the designs. Um, 120 because we're using them as mirrored vignettes. So when we say mirrored vignettes, essentially what that means is you get the design on your printout, you fold it in half along the black line down the centre of the design and then cut. That means when you come to shape and everything, the background of the die cut is going to be just as colourful as what the front is as well. So same with the peony there, just easing those leaves over, giving them a little bit of a a little bit more texture, a little bit more importance. And because you've got a generous amount of cut line detail in each one of these die cuts, anything shape-wise you give to the die cut will grab and hold. So those cut lines ensure that not only have you got detailing within your design, but it's going to hold any shape we give it as well. So technically speaking, you probably want to consider um, giving your shape and texture before You've stuck all your decoupage layers down, but it's just, again, for ease of access to these things for you guys when I'm demoing. It means the glue's nice and dry, so we can get on with the fun part, which is the creating. Um, Janice said that would make a lovely Christmas tree. The it'd still be, yeah, it would make a fun Christmas tree, wouldn't it? Something a little bit different from the norm. Same with those balloon flowers. A little bit of shaping 
on the background of them. I perhaps won't use all of them. I might want to snip into these and give, give it a different look again. I might tweak up some of these petals as well. Now, the reason of using those mirrored vignettes on most of these die cuts is because we're giving it so much height, so much dimension. No matter which angle we view these from, you're not going to see any white edges. Everything's going to have a colour. Everything's going to be this inviting kind of edge. So you saw with that top one, we're getting a little bit of rounding with the back of our pokey tool. We can also just then squidge it down to the centre to draw those petals up and forwards as well. And we can probably start sticking. I might have to put Mrs Mouse in first. Let's just see how we get on. Let's just see. Mrs Mouse might not end up making an appearance because I squished her, but let's see. <laughs> yeah, let's put Mrs Mouse in. So let's just make sure that's going to be... I'm asking a lot of this card to then stay upright after I've squished it a little bit, but I don't want to cut it again because I do want to show you how we can use this in the design. So I think let's just go for it um, and hope for the best. So removing one side of the red liner tape, again, using red liner tape just because it's nice and strong and also because we're using that acetate, you want something that's going to grip to the acetate like so and then we can remove the other side of that as well just by going in with our pokey tool and then just squidging down just sort of reaffirming all those score lines so when little Francesca Mouse is aloft if I hadn't bent her she would be standing proud um, I might try and secure her with a little bit of card in a bit but I'm sure she will be fine on the front of the card too and now for our flowers. So it'll still be first. This time around, we're going to be using a little bit of pin flare. Now my pin flare, I'm just going to, have to unblock the little nozzle. So we're just going in with my pokey tool, just releasing that little, um, what would you call it, a little stopper of dried glue, like so. Getting rid of that. And then that means we got the nice glue to work with it doesn't need much just a little bit on the background just to lift it from that base but think again about that placement as we've said do try out your placement first before you commit to sticking and then you can always take a picture if you like and then go by reference of the picture now for me one of the things I like to do is align everything so you've got a central point so I'm trying to use this little area of the stalk here as a central point to the design which means it gives me a point of reference it gives me somewhere to go with this design a little bit of glue in and just by overlaying those leaves like so do you see how rather than having something that kind of stop and start you've got that central point of overlap so everything looks like it's coming from the same area same with the agapanthus there obviously I'm gonna to have to put a little bit more glue on this one to lift it further from the base around about there but have that crossover point to the center it just keeps everything neat and gives you a reason it gives you um something to follow if you like so these little flowers at the bottom are going to be touching the uh peony so there you need a little bit of glue and then I think I'll probably leave the rest of it I might put a little extra bit of glue there just to give us that lift and that height of the background. So gently placing that in and same again, a little bit of glue, just a little bit more glue so it reaches it, like so. And do you see how we're building this design up? Now I do wanna add in a few of the balloon flowers as well, but I probably don't want the whole sort of pick, if you like, of the balloon flowers. I probably just want a few. So we can go in with our scissors and snip to release just like so we're just following those cut lines that are already laid down to create basically a different flower altogether a different um structure of the die cut uh, before we stick we just want to round off anything we snip so there's no harsh edges to those cut lines that we've used from our scissors so just taking our scissors gently and rounding everything like so that's going to look quite sweet there. So it's pulling in that background colour of the light pink as well. Just finishing things off 
in a pretty way. Again, using that same point of reference, everything's coming down into that central area like so. I think I do want another one of those little balloon flowers. So let's take it from the same stem so there's no wastage. Again, just going in and releasing like so. Nearly cut the wrong bit there. Did you see that? <laughs> that would have been a bit of a disaster. And just trimming again to the most to neaten everything up just to trim round and make sure everything's beautifully curved just like the die intended trimming like so that stalk just needs trimming down as well but what i might actually do is take the more closed up flower off from that side and then follow the line of that stalk round just to neaten like so and actually I don't even need it that long that's the beauty you do need to check these things as you're making as you're going along but because in nature things would overlap things would overlay look how well that then just tucks in so make sure you're leaving enough stalk just as a little tuck in but actually you can have a little bit of fun with these as well and this really could be any one of the floral collections this really could be any one of the card shaped collections it's just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of how to use these die cuts in their own right a little bit of the trumpet of the balloon flower there as well because we don't want to waste anything that can go in just coming round, peeking round the edge of oh, that'll still be there and the agapanthus i think i'm going to need a little bit more pin flare Pin flare. There we go. Yep. That one. So if you're refilling your pin flare at any point, just squidge the stopper out gently, like so. Remove any of the excess, she says, looking for a cloth. Excess glue, just to remove that, make it all nice and neat again. And also any of the stringy bits in there. These will be little bits of dried glue. So we can go in with a pokey tool and remove those onto a cloth as well. That just stops them when you come to add the glue back in. Because these bits are dry. If you added your glue in without removing those little bits, that little clump could end up going down your little nozzle and blocking your nozzle as well. So again, just a little bit of housekeeping. Just a, a good, good little way of using and, and refilling your pin flare. And do the lid. It's got little bits all over it, look. Same with those. If you've got any little hard dried bits of glue, do remove them before you try and refill your syringe, just because if you get any transfer, those little hard little bits could go into your nozzle as well. Squeeze, like so. And then to release, just kind of swipe it across the edge and that cuts off any glue that might be coming out of the tube and it also means you haven't got any glue on the outside of your syringe as well quite a little handy demo that one um that's looking nice but i feel like the agapanthus in the lilac is kind of all on its own there in the lilac so let's introduce uh, the night scent stock and we're going to snip into this as well because we just want a few little sprigs as we've done before with that bloom flower just to create our own version of a bouquet because remember none of your die sets you have to use as intended you can go a little bit rogue you can go in and snip these down add these into the background give yourself a little bit more point of difference if you like to the die like so now you see how just by instantly adding in a little sprig of your night scent stock it then mirrors the color so this now doesn't look out of place this now grounds these all together my balloon flower is going to go for a little wander because we're going to add this in underneath but again a great thing about using the pin flare glue gel is it just makes it a little bit easier and a little bit more user friendly if you like you haven't got, got to commit too soon because you've got a little bit of drying time on that just tapping that into place it grabs in areas 
eking that little bit of balloon flower back over. And I think we're going to finish that just with another little spray. Because remember, the eye does like um, triangles. So if you're creating a triangle, it's got somewhere to go. And it also likes odd numbers as well because it can find a central point. Oops, that's the pokey tool on the floor. So again, we're going to use that little sprig from the base. And we're just going to round that little sprig like so. Back with my pin flare. Just a few little squidges, just to again break up that expanse of pink on the peony as well. And I think I'm quite happy with that look. That looks quite cute actually. Um, one thing I do love adding, and this is the butterfly from the Butterfly and Bows dye collection from uh, Full of Love. Yes, I think, Full of Love. Because we've got the mirrored and the reverse is just as beautifully coloured as the front, it means things like butterflies, we can lift up those wings, give them a little bit of shape as well. And it just gives you such a lovely natural look. But it looks like the butterfly is going to be flying off the edge of the card. I think for this, I might use a little bit, oh no, I need a little bit more of the clear decoupage glue. Just in my little well on my mat, so I don't get my elbow stuck in it. And we're gonna be popping that, oops, sorry guys, just down the back of the butterfly like so. That means his wings are free to flap around and give you a little bit of motion. Oh, goodness me, I nearly knocked you all over then. But it just gives you that sense of storytelling, that sense of drama where the butterfly's coming off the edge of the card shape there. Have we got any questions, guys? Anything that needs uh, perhaps going over in finer point, in finer detail, do let me know. It's always nice to hear from you. Um, I think I'm quite happy with that. I mean, perhaps it needs a bow, possibly just to tie the bouquet together, maybe. That's a personal choice for that one. But I'm quite happy with how that background to that card looks like so. So we're going to stand that one up out of the way and we're going to work on our side easels as well. So you want to continue the theme. Um, if you're working on this at home, you might want to do a little stamp um, sentiment, for example, or a little photo, or perhaps it's a special birthday. You could put, you know, if it's 6-0, for example, you could put 6-0 in, in the little frames there. It's really up to you. But I think just for the purpose of this, we're going to go in with a nice touch of the florals again. Just a lighter touch than what we've got on the main card, but to draw that same floral design in as well. So I think we're going to go balloon flower and night scent stock. Yes, I think that would be nice. Maybe just like even one or two flowers. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it builds. Let's have a snip round on this just to neaten up those petals that we've snipped away from one another, like so. But again, remember, it really is your choice. It's your card, it's how you want to create it. But I think that could be quite nice coming across like so. And it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly matching. You could come in and go a little bit rogue, a little bit different on the other side, just giving you, again, because if it was in nature and you're looking at a bouquet in nature, it's not going to be exactly the same, is it? So having that point of difference gives you just a nice way of drawing in those more natural influences as well. So another little snip into this one. So I'm going to go fuller on one side than the other, like so. The sprigs are actually quite nice on their own, really. I might be tempted to leave them like that. This is the great thing about um, the, the way of making your own cards is it's personal preference. You can make these and do these however you wish. And actually, I do quite like the simplicity of that in kind of contrast to the background. So I think I might leave it like that, actually. Who knows? I might change my mind and just go to town and add something completely different in at some stage. But that's a nice thing. Once you've learned how to create a card like this, you can create it any number of ways with any number of the collections as well. This kind of reminds me of like a pressed flower you might find in like in a botanical handbook or something like that. Just having that sort of snipped away sprig gives you that sense of just nice, nice sort of Victoriana kind of look. 
I'm going to have them both coming out across the panel like so. I think that looks really cool. I quite like that. Leslie's put, could put a little verse on one side of the panels rather than the back. Yeah, exactly. So you could put your two, happy birthday, whichever it is you want to be, or a nice sort of poem, for example. That would look really pretty as well. Let's see what Janine's put on hers. So she's popped a design on one side with the dragonfly and the wildflowers and the grass and the window with a little bit of tissue tape in the background and then on the other side we've got the sentiment here sending birthday wishes as well just stamped to the middle of the panel and again little moth and the flowers on the other side as well which again a really lovely point of difference there uh we are almost done let's just stand this up like so stand that side up like so release our little Mrs Mouse stopper for her. Now she, once she is all ready to go, wants to stand proud in the middle of those flowers. And I'm sorry I've got that kind of out of shot, but let me just bring that forward. There we go. So she wants to be nice and proud. So remember, we've got that extra easel to the inside. Having her sort of right up against the background of those flowers really does bring her to life and gives those flowers um, a focal point as well. Now, being an easel to the centre, she's also going to need a stopper. So we'll just move that back a little bit and grab, if I can reach it. This is going to be our stopper for Mrs Mouse. This is Celebrate Your Day. So this also works as a sentiment for the card as well. That really could do with a little bit more tape as well. I feel like I've just gone... A little bit rogue with the tape. I forgot how to put half of it on. <laughs> Hopefully you guys don't mind too much. But again, rising that tape that sentiment up from the background just means it's got this um ability to then catch and stop everything going on on the front of the card, like so. Celebrate your day, cut from the sentiments from a little bit fancy in the pink and in the white. So remember, everything we do, the theme follows through, okay? So you've got the pink and the white running throughout, just ties everything together beautifully, and your stopper to the inside just finishes that card nicely as well. So if I could get the tape off the back, if you are struggling with the tape, just squidge it back down and go in from a different angle. Oh, it's going to be a pest. There we go. So have Mrs. Mouse standing proud just where you want her in all her glory and then counter that with your stopper to the inside of your card. Sorry for bending you, Mrs. Mouse. I do apologise. But look how well that all comes together, that all stands proud and it really is as simple as having... Two smaller easels either side, so your garden um, reflections either side, and then your central easel to the inside there as well. So something a little bit different. Hopefully, as we've gone through, that all kind of makes sense as to how we've worked it. So it's, it is just breaking it down. Easel, 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 and easel in the middle, and then we just sandwich it together with a little bit of a quick thinking <laughs> and trick techniques there as well so I will take a photo of the card and pop it up after the demonstration as well and of course here is Janine's that started it all let me just bring that back into shot also with Foxy Loxy so I'm just kind of oops standing everything up like so so I'll move mine out just for a second excuse me easel card you stand up there for the minute. And here is Janine's as well. Janine's gone in a little bit tighter with her um, side panels there, which I kind of like. I think it hugs in really nicely as well. Foxy Loxy to the middle. And then you've got all the beautiful design of the florals in the background there as well. Um, Leslie said, fabulous data demo. Thank you, Leslie. Don't have the side easels yet, <laughs> but you see what else you've got in your stash. Yeah, I mean, these could be your nested dies because they would make great mats and layers as well. Any one of your die sets, if you've got a bigger and then two smaller, you can create this same kind of look. Now, before anyone hops off, I did promise you we've got a special just to celebrate the uh, Facebook Live demonstration. So if you did or were interested in... The garden glimmer, uh, garden glimmers, garden reflections, which is this little die here. Let me find it if it's next to me. 
garden reflections here. So we've got the window panel to the centre, all of these lovely, I mean, these would make great tuck-ins, great tags as well for journaling, beautiful frame and those mats and layers. And of course, it's got its vignette as well. Could be a mirror, could be a window, could be used as simply as we have done here as well. <laughs> this is going to be um, a special coupon. So if you were interested in garden reflections, normal price is $14.99 on our website. Today, we're going to give you a special offer on this. Uh, so thank you for watching the Facebook Live. If you enter the code FB, 2008 so foxtrot bravo for facebook 20th of the 8th today's date at your coupon checkout uh, on our website you'll get five pounds off so you'll be able to get garden reflections for 9.99 which is a really fab little die to have in your collection um just because i mean the frame in itself is gorgeous but these little uh notelets these little uh, ones that cut out like little tags you're going to find those so so useful as well so that's your special offer for the facebook live foxtrot bravo fb2008 so it's facebook fb20 08 today's date foxtrot bravo 2008 to receive your five pounds off the garden reflections die set um also i did 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 promise <laughs> leslie's very excited i know five pounds off i thought that was, that was a quite a, quite a good little deal and again seeing them used in these different ways just gives you a whole um host of ways you can be crafting as well in your own time um I did promise a sneaky peek. So we have got, um, let me turn my camera around so I don't feel I'm just sort of talking to, wow, that was really close. <laughs> let me move back a little bit. Um, yes, sneaky peek. So we have got a new launch next week, which is just sublime. I cannot wait to show you more. It's, um, I can't tell you too much because the official launch hasn't gone out on Facebook yet. Um, but I had to share with you this. Uh, this again is, is by Janine, as you can probably guess by the styling. Just take a look. Isn't that glorious? So I know last time we had a lot of people asking for more square cards. This is just going to just transform your crafting unbelievably. This is such an exciting um, card shape we're bringing you. Uh, again, with that uh, sort of filigree design Carnation is known for. But there's so many things within this collection that just transform that just are so innovative that are so fun and I think that's the important thing as well so fun to use Janine has created this book I mean I, I don't know whether book really sums it up well but using that card shape so the card shape is called every which way which might give you a little hint as to things to come it is fabulous and it has all of these little um, filigree elements. It's got different ways of using it. It's got sort of note lip sizes in there. It's got gorgeous, gorgeous designs in there as well. I mean, I can't show you too much because I will get into trouble, but I thought, well, it's a Facebook Live. We need a sneaky peek. So we've gone to town on this card shape with filigree, with design, with all sorts. <gasps> Lots of sneaky peeks there. Probably shouldn't show you all of that. But essentially, it all revolves around these mini bouquets, which are just an absolute joy. An absolute joy to work with. They are gorgeous. I mean, you can probably see a couple of these here. We've got roses in here. We've got daisies in here. We've got lilies in here. I mean, the list goes on. Butterflies. Shh. Little butterflies. Sentiments as well. I cannot wait to show you more. I will absolutely do a proper... Um, sneak peek facebook live but i couldn't wait to share this with you because i just think this is just a masterpiece this is just a tour de force when it comes to designing so we've got pockets in there little lift out tags little almost like gift tags great for journaling really really pretty card design here little flaps as well papers Ooh, sneaky peeks sneaky peeks just glorious and look how Janine on that last page there has folded back that filigree again another little bouquet going on and she's added in these little gift tags too. I mean just just stunning in its own right as a, like a book like a journal book there like a memory book or a photo album for example but that's from one card shape I know right all I mean it 
bad, absolutely bad, from one card shape. This is one not to be missed. Please, please, please tune in. The show is uh, next Tuesday. Full details will start releasing from Friday. What's today? Today's Thursday. Yeah, from Friday, I believe. So do stay tuned to the um, social media pages for that. And I will be hopping on on Monday at about this time to give you guys a first heads up of the collection as well. So you can see in detail all the different die sets as well. I, I just love it. I cannot wait to show you more. Those bouquets, stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, a couple of people can't wait for that collection. Um, everything uh, will be available on catch up as well if anyone is working for example Leslie don't worry I will upload everything to Facebook afterwards and don't forget anyone uh, Leslie is it going to be more than one day yes it is going to be um, on Crate and Craft for four days I think it's their, their week four day deal so it will be um, launching on Tuesday but we will have shows on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday as well um don't forget anyone that has joined us for the facebook live do share if you have made this design along with us or if you're watching it back and creating it in your own time i would love to see we love 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 to see your designs that you create as well um and don't forget garden reflections special facebook live offer five pounds off this die set so it was 14.99 it will be five pounds off making it 9.99 if you enter the code FB2008 um, at checkout in your coupons. That's a uh, Foxtrot Bravo 2008 for that Facebook Live discount for you guys. As a thank you for joining us. Um, yeah, a couple of people are saying they really love those mini bouquets. I really love these mini bouquets. They are just gorgeous. Let me have, love to show you. I will leave you with the parting gift of that stunning front cover. Remember, this could be a card in its own right as well. Pam's just asked, will there be a preview? Yeah, absolutely, Pam. We always do a preview um, before the show, so it'll be Monday, probably at three, um, but I just have to double check a few things. So yeah, probably at three on Monday. Um, as always, we'll release information to our Facebook page ahead of the show. Um, so you guys can sign up uh, for reminders of when the event goes live. Um, Yes, so yeah, I should say actually a huge thank you to Janine and all her inspiration as well because her, her makes are just fabulous and as with all the DT, they are beautiful, beautiful designs. We just wanted to be able to bring this one to you when we had a little bit more time to go through it because it is one of the card shapes that has been asked for over and over again. Hopefully you have enjoyed the Facebook Live and I look forward to seeing your versions of the Triple Easel in group as well. Thanks guys, see you later, bye.